Hiking is a beloved national pastime and a great way to get out into the nature. But all too often, hikers leave a trail of waste behind, creating an eyesore and an environmental hazard. Some of this litter is collected by volunteers, but there simply aren't enough volunteers to keep pace. Today in our Sunday special report, we meet those who tackle the Sisyphean task of keeping mountains clean. They tell us that cleanups can only go so far and that a new approach is needed to make a difference. A tiger-shaped lantern soars upward. It's just one of a myriad of lights filling the night sky. Once a year, revelers descend upon New Taipei's Pingxi District for the annual Lantern Festival to illuminate the sky above the mountain. Nearly 2,000 lanterns carry away the hopes of the revelers, but just like the water bottles they discard, the remnants of those lanterns fall to the ground, leaving a trail of waste behind. It's been a week since the Lantern Festival, and the rain is non-stop, but that doesn't dampen the spirits of these volunteers. They gather together for roll call, and then divide up into smaller groups. Numbering more than 100, the volunteers brave the rain to clean up the mountain. The volunteers are led by 48-year-old environmental activist Wu Yuntian. Since climbing Jade Mountain in high school, Wu has been in love with mountains. In 2009, he established the Taipei-based group Outdoors Fun, which organizes hikes and mountain cleanups. The volunteers use metal tongs to pick up bottles and other waste from the ground. Long poles fixed with hooks are used to pull wasted lanterns down from branches. Pingxi is famous for its lantern festival and its long mining history. Its firefly population, which was restored several years ago, is also a major attraction. From April to June, the fireflies light up the night sky, making for a second lantern festival of sorts. But these brilliant insects rely on locals to protect them. In just a short span of two kilometers, the volunteers have removed nearly 15 bags of rubbish. This waste is not only unsightly, it can also be harmful to the environment and the ecology it supports. A slight change in the environment can have a major impact on the firefly population. Wu says that, come rain or shine, the cleanups have to continue. In places that are already messy and filled with garbage, you will find that the garbage will just keep building up. This is the broken windows theory. The mess will only grow over time. So that's why we say you need to get out there and do cleanups, especially in places where we've just finished cleaning. That way, we're setting up the space to get better and not worse. We make it more difficult for new garbage to appear. This vast and majestic mountain has stood for time immemorial, but even its timeless beauty can be spoiled by visitors who bring in garbage. Normally, the trails and cabins are shrouded in arrow bamboo, which is green and beautiful. But as soon as that burns away, you see piles of garbage. On February 3, 2019, a large forest fire broke out along the trails behind Xueshan's 369 hut. Afterward, park officials found piles of garbage left behind. Hikers had apparently left their waste behind while hiking, and those who followed them did the same. Plastic buckets, bottles, and utensils collected by volunteers afterward filled 260 burlap bags. This garbage didn't accumulate all at once. It built up over time. The Xue Dong Line Trail itself emerged from decades of hikes. It initially emerged in the early days of the China Youth Corps. The garbage accumulated over decades is all exposed at once when there is a fire. Wu said Xueshan's East Peak is a hot spot for Taiwanese hikers, and people have been hiking there for more than 50 years. So far this year, 
35,000 hikers have already descended upon East Peak's trails. The garbage they leave behind does not decompose on its own. Because there is no way to keep hikers from littering, garbage inevitably accumulates. This is why regular cleanup hikes are a must, Wu said. Wu's group shares its experience with mountain cleanups in a project with the Taiwan Environmental Information Association. Together, they've developed a handbook to encourage mountain lovers to take their trash with them when they leave the mountain. We've been cleaning up this garbage for all these years, so we know that it's not possible to expect these mountains to become very clean in just one or two short years. It will take time to ease into it, but realistically speaking, the good news is that today, more and more mountain hikers are paying attention to the issue of waste. Considered one of the most beautiful trails in the world, Jinqing Huaigu Ancient Trail gets a steady stream of visitors even on rainy days. The trail began as a forest railway used to transport lumber, but is now under the administration of the Forestry Bureau. Bureau experts say it takes a discerning eye to be effective on mountain cleanups. During these mountain cleanups, you may encounter more recently discarded waste, and at first glance, you know whether it's plastic. In that case, of course you can collect it without issue. However, if you encounter waste from forestry activity like rope, or if you see alcohol bottles from earlier decades, we recommend that you first stop and assess the situation. To the side of the trail is a steep slope. Garbage dropped by hikers hangs seven or eight stories up from the ground down below. To collect it requires dangling over the cliff on a rope. Another issue is that some waste is actually historical artifacts from the mining days. Being able to make the distinction is important. We've signed agreements with local organizations, including the Kavalan Mountain Association and Outdoors Fund. Groups adopt trails for cleaning, and we do some training together to discuss things like what ways can be collected and how far we should go with the cleanups. Sometimes after the cleanups are finished, we will arrange for garbage trucks to come and take the waste away. The public agencies that manage Taiwan's mountains have long held mountain cleanups and other activities. For years, they have maintained a set of guidelines governing the cleanup of various trails. Civic groups adopt specific trails, and members of the public get involved in individual cleanup activities. Some even participate in cleanup training to improve their waste collection skills on the trail. <laughs> With the exception of areas needed for national defense, areas where the terrain is dangerous, areas sacred to indigenous people, and areas needed for conservation, the parks will be fully open to the public. In 2019, the executive yuan lifted access restrictions on Taiwan's mountains and forest areas. That, coupled with COVID restrictions on travel abroad, gave rise to a climbing craze that's made mountain cleanups all the more important. But experts say cleanups do nothing to tackle the root of the problem as hikers continue discarding waste, leaving it for volunteers to collect. A better solution is something like the Leave No Trace campaign, which was launched in the U.S. in 2005. Our training of new recruits involves taking students on hikes at top 100 peaks. We take the leave no trace policy into the mountains and forests. We help them understand the concept of leaving the smallest possible impact on the environment. National Taiwan Sport University has incorporated no trace practices into its curricula, and it's the first university in Taiwan to do so. The concept is about showing respect for nature. Simply put, it means leaving nothing on the mountain but your footprints and taking nothing from the mountain but your memories. Details of the trip should be planned in advance, from what food to pack to what route to take to where you will camp. The no trace concept also entails knowing where to cook with fire and how to interact with flora and fauna. Garbage collection and disposal must also follow strict regulations. These college students from National Taiwan Sports University go on hikes in the mountains, where they engage in no-trace practices. They want to encourage more people to follow their lead. They hope to build a new generation that has a deep respect for the country's mountains.
是你越使用这个户外，你越在乎它，你就会越愿意保护它。The more time you spend in nature, the more you appreciate it, and the more motivated you will be to protect it. We have to make this generation and the next generation interested in sustainability. If you don't get young people out into the mountains, then, to be honest, they won't care about environmental destruction and won't care if the environment is polluted. This group of elementary school students recites a pledge before heading into the mountains. These are students from Muja Elementary School, and this small mountaineering group is greatly influenced by the concept of leaving no trace. Why do we do this? Because when we go into the mountains, we feel that the mountains are so beautiful. Whether it's inside a classroom or on a mountain hike, these students are taught to challenge their abilities and to love and respect nature. These young kids realize that if such a beautiful natural scene is to be preserved for the next person to enjoy, then they need to keep it looking the way it is now. These educators want to teach every potential hiker to care about nature. Hiker by hiker, they hope to slowly shift the paradigm to eradicate the behavior of littering and remove the need for mountain cleanups. If every person learns the value of leaving nothing behind, Taiwan's beauty can be preserved for generations to enjoy.